trying to manifest doesn't work because the act of trying implies that there's something outside of you to get. But that is a fallacy of the ego. That is the fallacy that the ego turns your desires into. That desire equals, oh, something I don't have yet. Something that's outside of me. Something that I need to get. Oh, so I, the ego, I'm going to hijack something called a manifestation practice and try to get this thing that is, I, as I'm perceiving it, outside of me. But before I get deeper into my spiel about this today, I will introduce myself to those of you who might not know me yet. My name is Genevieve. I am a manifestation coach. And here I talk all about real healthy ways to apply manifestation practices, the true spiritual mechanisms that are why manifestation even works. Those are the things I talk about. I tend to go in deep and especially in this video today, I'm going to go real deep into the real spiritual aspect of all of this because manifestation is a spiritual practice. I know that on the internet, especially nowadays on YouTube, manifestation has been turned into honestly like a trick or a gimmick, like something that you go pay $5 for at a fair and they give you a little like gimmicky thing and they say, oh, it's, it's manifested. It's like, it's been reducted to this very superficial thing that I know most of you have tried. Like you've clicked on the videos that say, you know, get them to be obsessed with you right now. If you just whisper into a picture of them and, you know, say their name 50 times and they'll like love you forever. Like weird gimmicky stuff like that. That is so like of the ego. It's so like coming from the ego thinking that there's something to do, something simple because the ego would love it if it was something really simple like that, that it could do to just control the whole external world. But manifestation, true manifestation is nothing like that. And true, healthy, real, long-term manifestation never comes from that kind of like gimmicky, weird trickster stuff. I'm already just jumping into it, so I didn't even finish my introduction, but I'm Genevieve, I'm a manifestation coach, and in the description below there are resources in terms of how you can work with me. If you would like to, you can do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, although I prefer that you actually do a course because, of course, I'm open and excited to talk to you guys, but what I have found is that you will get more long-term shifting, long-term value out of doing um, a course that I offer below, and there's two at the moment at the time of me publishing it. Um, both are pretty good, real good, but, um, but if you prefer to do a call, that's totally fine too, because calls can be great if you have very specific questions and you really wanna go in depth into talking to somebody about your circumstances or your life or the things that are coming up, that's great. But, but in terms of a structure that'll give you a long-term shift, the courses are great for that, and these courses are not gimmicky. They are not just like, here's a bunch of affirmations and just egoically say them a ton and then maybe something good will happen to you. It's, it's, uh, it's deeper stuff than that. So just check out all the links below for all of the different ways to connect with me and work with me. So I guess let's just get into this. So I'm a little bit in a mood today, not in like a bad mood, but I'm in a really deep like, okay, let's get to the truth of what's really going on here kind of mood. Because I've noticed this very stereotypical thing that is happening in the manifestation world. It's probably always been happening, probably even back in Neville Goddard's day, because when you listen to some of his live lectures that he gave that were recorded, the people that were asking him questions at that time are still very similar to the kinds of questions that I get in my own comments. Like people asking him like, well, how can I get a specific person to love me? Or how can I win the lottery? You know, things that obviously are very attractive to all humans. All humans want things like an abundance of love, an abundance of security, an abundance of health. And of course, your ego wants to control those things and it wants to think it can get it. And it also loves to perceive that those things exist outside of you, like security in the form of money. That's a very physical outside thing. Love in the form of another person. That's a very physical outside thing. And the ego has no other way to relate to that because the ego is focused on the singularness of self and the, the scarcity of life in terms of like, whoa, we are uh, fallible human beings. We've got to stay alive. There's danger everywhere. We've got to make sure we've got everything we need to keep going. The ego's job really is to keep you alive, but keep you alive in a very 3D sense, not in a very God 
spiritual, we exist forever as eternal God conscious beings sense, the ego does not get that and actually can feel quite threatened by that idea because it's just not something that it can even get on board with. So I'm bringing all this up because a lot of you never shift from trying to manifest from your ego, this like frontal lobe part of you right here, you get stuck in this forever, you never shift out of trying to manifest from your ego to manifesting from your soul, from your true higher self, spirit, whatever you wanna call it, there's lots of different words you can call it, but when we say that you shift your state of being, your beingness is your genuine soul energy. It's like, where is that like raw beingness that you embody, where is that beingness being channeled into dominantly? Is it being channeled dominantly into obsession over people, places, and things, and therefore a scarcity or lack, lack mentality, as you hear us say a lot? Or is it being channeled into, I am fulfilled. I am God. I am whole right now, in this moment, with things just as they are, because I say so. I am an omnipotent, <laughs> amazing being that is not dependent on this world. I can recognize that this world is temporary in a way that is not threatening to me. The ego cannot do that. The ego cannot acknowledge that they are, that you are, I should say. The ego cannot acknowledge that you are not dependent on this 3D world. The ego feels extremely dependent on the 3D world and it cannot differentiate that you are not dependent. But that's really the true goal, the bottom line goal of you as a manifester is to stop going into the ego in terms of like how to make this happen, how to try to manifest, how to get the things you want. You've got to get out of the ego thinking that there's anything out there that you need and that you're trying to get and that you're dependent upon and that you won't be happy until you get it. That's all ego. And the reason that things really aren't working out for you is again, you're trying to manifest from the ego. You're trying to make things happen in this very controlling, like I'm gonna do this and then that'll give me this. And if I just do it right, that'll give me that. That's a very linear egoic logic and manifestation happens again as a result of a state of being shift you in your genuine energy, your genuine soul energy, and whatever you wanna call it, because honestly, even I have trouble describing like what is it that manifests. It really feels like it's like your soul essence, that's the best word I can have for it, but it's like something ineffable, something indescribable that all of us humans have, all of us humans that are these alive, amazing, conscious beings, we all have this ineffable, mysterious, magical quality about us, but that quality about us can be trapped behind a scarcity mindset or it can be in like free open flow because you are in so much trust you are in so much just knowing that you really do have everything you need and you easily have access to everything you need and it's not because the 3d gave it to you it's because you are so in touch with your own beingness and that in touchness with your own beingness it doesn't come from your mind. It just doesn't. It doesn't come from your ego. It comes from you going within, feeling your body, feeling your heart, feeling your breath, taking the practice for you might be in taking more moments throughout your day just to be in the present moment. And what I'm saying is very Eckhart Tolle. So if you have read The Power of Now or if you haven't, I suggest you go reread it or read it again um, because that's, that's really kind of the things he's talking about in that book are very much the same kinds of things I'm bringing up right now. That we have to let go of this ego suffering. I think he calls the ego like the pain body where it's like it thinks that there's a future. It also thinks that there's a past and the ego is always like stuck in both. It's never in the present moment. It hates the present moment in some ways. It's always stuck between the future and the past and it's suffering over both of them. And a lot of you, the way you're trying to manifest is you are in that. You are worrying about the past. You're worrying about your specific person in terms of like, well, all these things happened and they think this and I said this and then they did this. And you're carrying that into your present now moment that has nothing to do with that past stuff, that past stuff doesn't exist. It's not a place you can go back to. It's not a physical place you can go. So therefore it only exists within you in this powerful being you have in which whatever focus that you are taking, whatever stance you're taking in this present moment in terms of your focus, if your focus 
is still grounded in a past event, in a past dynamic, then that's why it's alive right now. That's the only reason why it's alive right now is because you are choosing that past fixation, that thing that happened, you're fixated on it still, you're still alive in the pain of it, your ego very much identifies with it, and that's your block, that's what's happening. But then at the same time, you're also worried about the future and you're wondering like, well, when, when is my person going to come? Or when is the money going to come? Or when is my nose going to ma magically change? Or when is the gifts and prizes? When are they going to come? Because in my ego, I'm being such a good person and I'm so good in the wish fulfilled. So when is my, when is my cash and prizes going to show up? So that's also, you're not really in fulfillment. And I, that's, this is what the ego loves. It loves to do things performatively. It gets all this information about manifestation and about spiritual practices and then it thinks it is superior then it thinks it's got control because the ego loves control and this is why intellectual people can accidentally be almost like a harm to themselves because your ego hijacks all the information you get and thinks oh okay I know that so because I know that I'm gonna performatively do it but you're not really embodying it. You're just sort of in your mind like, okay, I'm positive. Like I'm gonna be positive for like 30 minutes and okay, my SP is coming because I'm being really positive right now. And it's very performative <laughs> and it's very much conditional and that you're doing something in hopes to get something. And this is one of those big paradoxes of manifesting that I'm sure you've heard before, especially if you listen to me, that if you're ever trying to get something, if you're ever trying to do something, to get something, it does not work because everything that you are doing in your beingness, it has to be genuine and in the moment and self-fulfilled, self-propelled, self-sustaining of itself in the moment, not in this way of like, okay, if I do this well enough, then I'll get something. It has to be like done. I've already chosen it. I'm already embodying it. And the, the, the 3D shift that will eventually catch up. I have no idea when, but eventually it'll catch up that's not really my business and I don't really care because I'm so self-sustained. This is what true shifting into fulfillment really feels like where you are truly so self-sustained in I have decided what my experience is and what's true about me and I am planting myself in this present moment in terms of I'm okay with this moment. I'm choosing love in this moment or whatever it is that you would like to choose in this moment and that's it. End of story. I'm sustained off of what I have chosen because newsflash again that the ego does not like there is nothing to be added on to you from this 3d world and anything that the 3d does add on to you it's only because you within got very comfortable in it first that you accepted it within you first and i know that again your ego doesn't like that your ego has a lot of questions about that it's, and so you have to just acknowledge the ego thoughts that come up and then just put them to the side. You have to, you really have to, that's what truly a mental diet's about, is it's okay if you have thoughts and questions that come up and judgments that come up, because that's also what the ego loves to do is judge. You just acknowledge it and you just, you just put it, just be neutral, practice being neutral about it. Like you don't, don't entertain them because the more you have questions and you are like, well, that's a serious question and that's a, that's a big deal, that question. And you're like, really need that, that, that question answered. That's you, again, just being in the ego, trying to figure it out. There's nothing to figure out here. The ego really doesn't have a job here. In fact, your ego is mostly a hindrance to this entire project, the project of manifestation. <laughs> Because again, no shifts happen in the mind. The mind eventually follows after your beingness has shifted, your state of being. It's something kind of mysterious that happens. And again, it's like, I was telling this to a client the other day where it's almost like you're just sort of going along, you're just doing your, your practice, your chosen spiritual practice, your manifestation practice, whatever it is, and you're feeling kind of the same, but you're still doing it, you're practicing your focus, and then it's like all of a sudden you notice, whoa, I suddenly feel more comfortable within myself, or whoa, I suddenly just feel like all those weird anxious thoughts and questions I had two weeks ago, I totally don't have those anymore. It's kind of like an after effect that you notice, like, oh, I don't, I don't, care as much or I don't think like that's a problem anymore because your ego likes to think everything's a problem especially manifestations a problem it's got to figure out and it's not and you'll notice that it changes kind of after the fact it's not because you're controlling it in the moment it's like it's like the last to get on board that you notice later shifted but I want to get back to something I was saying before in terms of there is nothing that this 3d world can add on to you 
or can give you that you haven't genuinely come into peace about within yourself. That's what causes manifestations. The 3D world only changes because you came into a genuinely different state about it before, before the shift in the 3D happens. And this is especially tr true for things like SP manifestations or like really big shifts in your health or in your money situation or just, you know, those big important things to you. They don't shift because of a 3D gimmicky thing you did. They shift because you genuinely came into peace towards that person, place, or thing. You have to stop looking at your person or looking at money or looking at the perfect nose or whatever it is you're obsessed with. You have to stop looking at that stuff like it's going to be your salvation, like it's going to be your savior, because it never will be. It never will. There, again, it's a fallacy of the ego that there's something outside of you that you could get that would fulfill you. It never does. And you've experienced this before. I think I mentioned this before, but I'm saying it again. You've probably had the experience of getting exactly what you wanted before, but it didn't really fulfill you. It was like a temporary thing that you got and you're like egoically, yeah, I got it. But then you quickly, your ego decided to go off to something else to fixate on or obsess on. And so this is what I mean of like the real work of manifestation is an internal thing. It's a self on self thing. And you start to get way more comfortable with you, with yourself, way more at peace within yourself, way more just knowing that you're going to be okay, as opposed to knowing that, yep, everything's wrong and I've got to bottle myself up and I just, I'm so worried. You are no longer in that because you realize that's an illusion. All of that worry and scarcity is an illusion because again, nothing has been kept from you. Nothing is being held from you. You are an amazing, miraculous human being with God consciousness, just like every single other millions and billions of human beings on this planet. You are no better than, you're no worse than, you are just this amazing, fully equipped, awesome human being who has choice in their life, choice of what you can focus on and what you cannot focus on. And really your job here is to simply train your consciousness, train your focus on to what it is that you actually want to experience. Because again, the 3D doesn't give you the experience. You give yourself internally this experience and you give it to yourself right now in this moment. Because again, the future does not exist and the past does not exist. And if you're doing this performatively, if you're doing this like, if I'm just a good person, then I'm gonna get my little prize, you're gonna be very disappointed because you're acting from your ego. You're not acting from your genuine, grounded spirit that is in this moment giving love to your person or giving ease and love and extending your own sense of security to money. If you're trying to manifest money, money is simply an energy of security. So if you want more money, you are extending your own sense of security to money. You are always giving your energy, your fulfillment to the thing you want. You're not sitting here like trying really hard and like hoping it comes to you. It cannot. The 3D stuff, it's, it's not where any power is. You are this amazing being with power. And as a manifester, you're learning how to tap into your own experience of power that is so independent, that is so sovereign, that is again, not dependent on anything coming to you. This is also why that other paradox that I sometimes talk about, that paradox of the more you're kind of open to failure, the more you don't really need anything and you're just kind of open to whatever happens, happens. The reason that paradox of the more you're open to failure, the more you don't fail, and the more you're not open to failure, the more you do fail. The reason that that's true is because when you're open to failure or whatever you want to call it, it's because you know, I don't need that. I'm the powerful one. Like I don't need any of this stuff. I'm just choosing it because I can choose whatever I want. Whatever exists here in this world and consciousness is accessible to me. And I'm just having fun extending my power that that thing is lucky to get my focus on and my powerful loving attention on. I'm just extending that to that thing, but I'm not dependent on it. It is honestly dependent on me. And so when you're truly in that kind of frame of mind, you realize like, yeah, I don't, even if it never came to me, even if it never did the thing that I want, it wouldn't really matter because I'm the one enjoying the experience of just giving it my fulfillment. I'm not here with like my, my death grip on it. Like, please come to me, please come to me. I'm being so good, please come to me. I'm trying to be so loving, so you'll please come to me. <laughs> that, 
you can see from the just hilarity of that why that it doesn't work and i know that in your conscious mind you're not thinking well that's not what i'm doing but energetically a lot of you are a lot of you are in much more desperation energy towards these things you're trying to manifest then you're willing to admit to yourself because again the ego does not want to be honest with itself it just wants control or what it thinks is control because control is an illusion it's just there's so many illusions in the ego that you are learning to overcome the more you sink deeper into what a true manifestation practice is you are learning to really disregard the kinds of arguments the kinds of thoughts that come up in the ego and you're learning to not take them seriously anymore you're learning to go deeper and take your true beingness seriously in terms of saying right now I'm choosing that I'm fulfilled. I don't give a fuck what the 3D is doing because I am no longer ego. I am no longer dependent on the 3D like my old paradigm was. I am choosing me. I am choosing me. I am choosing my beingness. I am choosing my own sense of love and my own sense of fulfillment. And again, it's lucky that I extend that to this world around me. And yep, it's a cool byproduct. It's a cool after effect that the things that I extend my fulfillment to tend to want to come towards me because I'm the powerful one and I'm the one saying, hey, you, you that I love and you that I offer security. It's cool that when I do that, of course, you want to come towards me because I'm being genuine. I'm not being like, like, this is kind of a weird analogy, but this is a thing I thought of today. A lot of you are manifesting as if you're fishing, as if you've like, got your bait and your hook and your line and you're like in your sp somewhere out there in the pond and you're like okay i got the perfect bait on there i'm doing it right i got the process right i got the perfect you know thing to get what is that called when you put it in the water <laughs> clearly i'm not a fisherman <laughs> and you're like okay i'm gonna get it it's gonna it's gonna get to me and the fish the sp fish that you're trying to get it it knows what a bait and hook looks like. Like you cannot trick the universe. You cannot trick your inner being. You cannot go through the motions of this and try to trick your SP because you've got like this, oh, look, a positive package of love that I've put on this hook um, and trick your SP to coming to you. You have to be instead a genuine juicy fly that is not on a hook but is just, you know, floating above the water. You have to be so surrendered. You are not trying to hook anybody, but you're just being this juicy, amazing fly that all the fish want to eat. And you're just, you know, hovering above the water and every single fish is snapping at you because you are just like the genuine thing that they want. I hope that analogy makes sense to you because it makes a lot of sense to me. And this is again, why I see a lot of you not manifesting because you're not being genuine. You're being a manipulator. And I know that's hard to hear. It sounds a little bit harsh, but honestly, that's what a lot of you are being. You are trying to manipulate somebody through a manifestation practice and you're not really shifting yourself. You're still in resentment towards somebody or you're still in genuine total distrust and a lot of pain and a lot of just stuff going on in you. And you're thinking that if you just like say enough affirmations or if you just do something correct the ego loves to think this is about doing it's really not of course you do need to have some sort of practice but the practice isn't for your mind as i said it's for your body it's for your beingness it's for you to really practice what fulfillment feels like in a very genuine way so it is a practice but it's not a mind doing it is more of a consistent simple like i'm going to pattern myself again and again with this practice but it's not because my mind is doing something to get what it wants and that's again what a lot of you are doing and why you never get what you want and then you think this doesn't work but it's really because you just never did it right you never stopped being the fisherman with his hook you need to become the fly all right, I think that is good for today. Please let me know your thoughts and questions as you watch this. I always say this, obviously, to help you. I really want you to shift out of a mental paradigm in terms of how you're doing this. Yes, your mind can be a tool in terms of part of like the many tools you use to help you manifest, but you are not your mind. You are not your ego. You are not your thoughts. And this is also what I find to be very dangerous in the like over affirming part of this culture where it's, it's very too much mind and it's too much ego control where you think if I just like think the perfect thought enough, things will come. What's interesting is with that, you can have some shifts. I've had that in my own life, but they tend to not stick around. They tend to be kind of like come and go. So what I'm talking about today is really about true 
sustainable shifts where you really are like, okay, I'm not focusing on the 3D anymore at all. Nothing comes from the 3D. Truly, the 3D is not where the cash and prizes are. Your inner being, your own soul, your own choosing of your own fulfillment, that's the cash and prize. And you're choosing that and then, as I said, extending it to the thing that you've decided that you would like. So that's what I got for you. I will see you in my next video. All right, bye.